Welcome back, everybody. This is episode three of No Man's Sky Beginner's Guide. I am Big Papa Timo. We are on our way back to our starship. We have gotten our hermetic seal. I was just showing you guys how to do a little jetpack jumping and some dashing. We were picking up some of these hockey pucks, scanning some critters, and we're going to go back and do some more repairs to our starship. Our thermal protection is falling. We are down below 50%. We're going to stop for a moment and we're going to recharge everything. We're going to use some sodium for the hazard protection. We're going to use some oxygen for the oxygen supply. And we ran out of phosphorus, so we're going to use some condensed carbon for the mining laser. And we're back to our ship. Let's go ahead and jump in because it never hurts to be inside. Pulse engine still needs some repairs. I'm going to click on that. We have the hermetic seal. Component is repaired. It should forward our quest a little bit. Now we need to work on the launch thruster. Let's see what it tells us to do next. Craft dihydrogen jelly. Now, see, I told you that we were going to need some dihydrogen, even though there's a bunch of it right in front of our face here. We're going to go ahead and go back to our inventory, see what it takes to craft dihydrogen jelly. It takes 40 dihydrogen. We're going to go ahead and make one of those. Since we have 123 dihydrogen, we're going to go ahead and craft a few more just so we have spares. Then we're going to go back into our starship, go over our launch thruster, and use the dihydrogen jelly. That's going to move us forward. Now we need to construct a portable refiner, and we need to craft metal plating. So we're going to need ferrite dust. We have 114. We need to make one metal plating. We have done that. And then we are going to left pad up one, and it's going to show us how to build a portable refiner. It takes oxygen and the metal plating. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. We need to go to the fuel inverter. This is going to take carbon or condensed carbon. Condensed carbon, it takes less of and a lesser volume. So if you have it, use that. And then we're going to put... 64 pure ferrite, that's all we have, or 64 ferrite dust. It's going to make 64 pure ferrite for us. So we're going to refine that, and while it's doing that, I'm going to take the opportunity to shoot some more of these little hockey pucks, get some more mats. I'm also used to a much longer pulse on my mining laser, so forgive me for the overheats. And our refiner didn't take very long at all, so we're going to go ahead and grab our pure ferrite out of there. We're also going to grab carbon and pop it in there and make condensed carbon. Okay, now we should be able to repair our launch thrusters. Let's go ahead and hover over that. We have the 50 pure ferrite. We've already done the dihydrogen jelly component is repaired. Our ship is good to go, guys. That was pretty easy. Starship repaired. Launch systems online. Don't forget to pick up your portable refiner. Take whatever you were making out. Put it in. Now, there is still some fuel in here, but when we back out of here and pick this up, it's going to give us the carbon back that was in the fuel tank. But we also don't want to forget that we have this guy over here. Don't want to waste materials. Check on that damaged machinery, see what it needed to do. Cobalt, nope, don't have that yet. I wonder if there is cobalt right around. And knowing what I know, there is. We're going to scan these real quick. Look at that, cobalt. We're going to spend a moment and get some cobalt real quick so that we can fix that damaged machinery. 
but we're also going to stockpile just a little bit. Cobalt, if you can't find it on the surface, is normally available in caves. So if you go into the caves, look for the stalactites or the stalagmites, and they are almost always cobalt based. Good thing to know. machinery over here. And it didn't give us any bonus. Probably because of the stage of the quest line we're in. So now it's telling us to get in our ship and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's see what it says now. Seek answers among the stars. R2 to take off. Hold and squeeze. Launch thrusters down to 25%. R2 and O gives you a boost, and we're going to launch out of the atmosphere into outer space. It tells you what system we're in. Hey, look, there's a bunch of asteroids here. Now, before we go crashing into asteroids, we get a little heads up display. The O button was the boost. Ooh, we have an incoming message. We're going to double push down and go to this symbol here. Go ahead and push up and that will start that incoming transmission source 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm Let's go ahead and identify ourselves. You are not alone. Follow the Broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be set of planetary coordinates. Input the data. Navigational, Navigational data received. It has given us a location. Now before we turn, I'm going to go ahead and hit X a little bit. Fire my photon cannons move around a little bit just so that I can line up with different asteroids. you got to hit them a couple times before they blow up. Some of them just explode and then there are other really really big ones out here that will just take kind of dents. But you'll notice that we're getting three different materials. We're going to get gold, silver, and tritium. Um, the gold and silver are not that important just yet and the tritium will become important in the future. Another aspect of the game, though, you get to do some space mining. Now, we're going to follow our heads-up display. And we're going to lock onto the signal source. Now, you see that we have an unknown planet, and it says press L3 to scan. We're going to do that. And then make sure you keep your cursor on that object so that it doesn't get off before it has a chance to do the scan. And we're also going to turn and face our original planet, Terra Beta. And we're going to do the same thing to that. And you'll notice that it says it has salvageable scrap, selenium, copper, phosphorus, and salt. And it's a hot planet. It was also discovered by me. Now, it has been mapped, but this other planet has not. That's because we need to be on the planet's surface scanning to map. We're going to line up with the signal source here. And we're going to R1 and R2 at the same time. Hold that down together until we get that. Oh, we went too far. So L2 to stop. And there was a planet hiding behind the planet. So we're going to scan that one too. It's a high energy. Gamma root copper, uranium, and salt. Also unmapped. And we're going to retarget the signal source. That orange one up to the left, that is actually the space station. We'll be heading there soon enough. But for right now, we're headed to this planet. It'll take us about a minute to fly there, so in the meantime, what we can do is we can look through our inventory real quick. 
You notice we have a couple free slots here. I'm going to show you a couple things. The Starship General Inventory, we have 15 slots. That's the General. And then we have the Technology. There are four here and two groups of two. Those will be for updates later. We go back to the Exosuit. We have 24 slots available, some of which are taken up by Hazard Protection, Jetpack, and Life Support, which you cannot get rid of. And then we also have Technology. We have four available slots. And then we have what's down here called the cargo with we have no available slots yet, but that's exosuit high capacity inventory. I will show you the use for that later once we get to the space station. About 17 seconds out, flying along in our nice little fighter here. One thing you'll learn in this game is that you never have enough inventory space. The further along in the game you get, the more and more crap you're going to be carrying around. But you're also going to be using it a lot more. So we're coming in hot here. And my suggestion is, do a barrel roll. Really doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever, other than the fact that it's fun. As you come flying in towards your location, don't forget to... L2 to slow down, then you can R2 to, to speed up a little bit, point a little bit close, and then to land, you hit the square. Come in for a little bit of a chunky landing. We go ahead and jump out, and we have a first sentinel. These guys right here are super, super important. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on him. We're going to scan him because he's scanning something else. And it'll show you that he has processing status. He's... Oh, what was it? Can't see it anymore. Uh, basically, the Sentinels are the protectors of all these planets. So he's going around and scanning things. What you don't want to do is make them mad. And to make them mad... If you start mining something in their presence, I'm going to scan this first, and then fire off that, he's going to go, hey, wait, you just blew something up and come take a look at me. Don't shoot him. And also, don't mine anything else while he's right there. See that little crescent shape on the screen above my head? That's the direction that he is for me, and then the lower right shows that we are in range of a sentinel. We're going to walk away a little bit, and that's going to get a little bit weaker. And notice that there's a cave over here. We're now outside of the Sentinel's general view, but if you blow too much stuff up, they come a-running. If you kill critters, they come a-running. We have birds flying nearby. We want to scan those. Flying creatures are the worst things in this game to scan, at least for me. Some people are probably much better at it than I am. But me tracking these guys is just a pain. But look at that, a thousand units just for scanning one creature. And you want to make sure again to scan everything in your immediate surroundings. And I'm going to show you that we have a save and chart. This is a waypoint. I want to click on that and that's going to chart the area. But it is a manual save point. So if you back out of the game now and you want to return to exactly this point, that is a manual save. Every time you get out of your ship, though, it is an auto save. So if you need to save really quick, you can just jump in your starship, jump back out, and you have an auto save selected. Now you see here, this is says search. We can't because it requires an Atlas Pass version 1. That is a crafted item that you will find the pattern for later. It comes quite a few hours into the game. So now we're going to go ahead and check out our broken technology. 16, 16, 16, log entry, 4925C follows. The sparking wire of the machine generates a signal tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left the message is long gone. Let's decipher that. Entry 4925C, no fuel in fail to reach station, hazard protection low, no choice but to underground deployed base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. That's where we have to stop for right now. 
Hopefully we'll see you next time. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up and maybe hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and fly safe.